we want to determine if the given series converges or diverges. So to help us decide on an appropriate test, let's take a look at our infinite series. Notice now we have the sum of one divided by the square root of the quantity n cubed plus three n. Notice if we ignore this plus three n, this series would resemble one divided by the square root of n cubed, which if we wrote using a rational exponent, would be one divided by n to the three halves, which would be a known converging series by the p-series test. So again, if we use the fact that the nth root of a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m divided by n, the given series resembles the sum of one divided by n to the three halves, which we know converges by the p-series test. With p equal to three halves, which is greater than one. So if we have a series that resembles a known converging or diverging series, the two most appropriate tests will be the limit comparison test or the direct comparison test. And remember, in some cases, more than one test will work. So I think for this example, we'll go through both tests just to show that more than one test can be used. But let's start by reviewing and applying the limit comparison test. The limit comparison test tells us that if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n equals L, which is greater than zero, then if the sum of b sub n converges, then so does the sum of a sub n. And if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n equals L, which is greater than zero, where the sum of b sub n diverges, then so does the sum of a sub n. So because we're comparing to a known converging series, we want to show this limit here is greater than zero, where the sum of b sub n is a known converging series, and the sum of a sub n is the given series. So we want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is going to be from the given series. So we'll have one divided by, I'm going to write this as the quantity n to the third plus three n to the one half power instead of the square root. And we'll divide this by b sub n, which is from the known converging series of one divided by n to the three halves. So we have the limit of this complex fraction, where this division bar represents a division of two fractions, which we're going to write as a multiplication problem. Instead of dividing by the bottom fraction, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the top fraction and then times the reciprocal of the bottom fraction, which would be n to the three halves divided by one. Nothing simplifies here, so we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the three halves divided by the quantity n cubed plus three n to the one half power. <coughs> now again, notice in the denominator, if we ignore this plus three n, because as n approaches infinity, only n to the third matters, the degree of the denominator would be three halves, which is the same as the degree of the numerator. And therefore, this limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which would just be one divided by one, which is equal to one. And notice this limit is greater than zero. And therefore, since we compared it to a known converging series, the given series also converges. So by the limit comparison test, with the sum of b sub n equals the sum of one divided by n to the three halves, which converges by the p-series test, and the sum of a sub n equals the given series, since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n equals one, which is greater than zero, the given series converges. Now let's also see if we can determine that the given series converges using the direct comparison test. So let's first review the direct comparison test. Given the sum of a sub n and the sum of b sub n, such that 
a sub n is greater than zero and less than or equal to b sub n, then if the sum of b sub n converges, then so does the sum of a sub n. And if the sum of a sub n diverges, then the sum of b sub n also diverges. So because we're trying to show convergence, we want to show this statement here is true, where b sub n is a known converging series, so we want to show that the terms of the given series from a sub n will always be less than or equal to b sub n, the terms from the known converging series. So if these terms are less than these terms from the converging series, we can conclude that the sum of a sub n also converges. So from the limit comparison test that we just did, we know we're going to compare to the sum of one divided by n to the three halves, which we know converges. So we're going to let this equal the sum of b sub n, and therefore the given series is going to be the sum of a sub n. So by the direct comparison test, since the sum of one divided by n to the three halves converges, by the p-series test. And we want to show that zero is greater than a sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n. Or in this case, zero is less than a sub n is from the given series. Which I'm going to write to the one-half power instead of the square root. We want to show this is less than or equal to b sub n, which is one divided by n to the three halves. If this is true, we can conclude that the given series is also convergent using the direct comparison test. So, so looking at these values, notice how this denominator here is going to have a larger denominator because of the plus three n. And since the numerators are the same, the fraction with the larger denominator is going to be smaller than the fraction with the larger denominator. To get a better feel for this, let's, let's take a look at these two fraction values on the graphing calculator. To save some time, I've already typed in these fractions. In y1, I entered one divided by the quantity x to the third plus three x raised to the one-half power. That's how I used x instead of n on the graphing calculator. And then for y sub two, I entered one divided by x to the power of three halves. Now if we go to the table by pressing second graph, notice how y sub one is always less than or equal to y sub two, therefore this compound inequality is true, and therefore by the direct comparison test, we can conclude that the given series is convergent. Notice how as x, or in this case n increases, these values are very close together, but notice how y sub one is always less than y sub two. So again, to complete our statement here, since this condition is met, the given series, converges. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.